This video is about homocystinuria or one way of looking at homocystinuria. Now in this question there is an eight-year-old Caucasian male experiencing severe chest pain and is diagnosed with acute MI. Lab workup reveals an increased seromethanine level which of the following amino acids is most likely essential in this patient? Now that's a question. Now it's very, very obvious from the question that this patient has uh, homocystinuria because an eight-year-old boy should not be having chest pain and MI. And their seromethanine level should not be that high or should not be high. So it's, it's a very straight out, simple diagnosis in that aspect but now they're putting a little twist to the question and they're asking which of the amino acid becomes essential in this particular patient which is probably not essential in a normal patient really that is the question so let's go through the pathway really quickly now this is the pathway I was talking about Kaplan often refers to this pathway as the vomit pathway because every time you see it you just want to vomit but really it's not that difficult so let's go through it so where are we talking about what's causing homocysteinuria so this is our homocysteine I'm gonna jump down here right away I assume that you know this pathway somewhat so homocysteine is becoming methionine okay and the enzyme that is responsible for converting homocysteine to methionine, methionine is homocysteine methyl transfers and homocysteine methyl transfers needs two vitamins one is folate the other is b12 okay we know this right and then the methionine becomes SAM and SAM eventually is going to become homocysteine again now homocysteine is going to go up the pathway now homocysteine is going to become cystathionine and it's going to use this uh, enzyme cystathionine synthetase and it's also going to use the vitamin b6 Cystathionine is going to become propionyl coa. Propionyl coa is going to become methyl melanyl coa. Methyl melanyl coa is going to become succinyl coa, and then eventually it's going to enter TCA. So another way of thinking about it is eventually homocysteine is going to become succinyl coa, and homocysteine will eventually lead to the TCA. Another way of looking at it. So now, uh, what is really happening in homocysteinuria? In homocystinuria, oftentimes we have deficiency or defected cystathionine synthetase. So this enzyme is going to be defected. As a result, what's going to happen to our homocysteine level? The homocysteine level is going to rise, rise, rise. And when the homocysteine level rises, it's going to pull backwards. And our methionine level is going to rise, rise, rise. So this is what's happening in this particular patient. In this particular patient, we are measuring methionine and we, said, we see that that's high and we can instantly deduce that methionine is high because homocysteine is high homocysteine is high because we have defected cystathionine synthetase and we cannot really make cystathionine now that we have an understanding of the pathway now let's talk about what amino acid is going to become essential in this patient so now that we don't have cystathionine synthetase we are not making cystathionine, right? So the cystathionine level is going to drop. A deviation from this pathway is that cystathionine is going to make cysteine. And it's going to make cysteine by using the en enzyme cystathionase. Cystathionase, okay? This pathway also needs B6 as the, uh, the vitamin B6. So let's go over it one more time. So when we have homocystinuria because of deficiency of cystathionine, cystathionine synthetase, we cannot make cystathionine. If we cannot make cystathionine, our cystathionine level drops. As our cystathionine level drops, we cannot make cysteine from cystathionine by using the enzyme cystathionase which also needs another vitamin the same vitamin as uh, cystathionine synthetase and this pathway is also inhibited as a result we cannot make cysteine so it's quite clear from this standpoint that the essential amino acid one of the essential amino acid in this patient is going to be cysteine 
Okay, so we saw the question. Uh, the question was, let's look at the question one more time. The question said an eight-year-old Caucasian male experiencing severe chest pain is diagnosed with acute MI. Lab workup reveals increased serum methionine level. And we told you why methionine is going to be increased because of homocysteine is going to be increased. That's why methionine is going to be increased. Which of the following amino acid is most likely essential in this patient? Which of the following amino acid? I didn't give you the list, but it is really going to be cysteine. Cysteine is not an essential amino acid in a normal patient. But when you have homocysteine, uh, cystothionine synthetase deficiency or defected cystothionine synthetase, hom uh, cysteine is going to be an essential amino acid in those patients. Now let's talk about what are some of the symptoms we're going to see when someone has uh, homocysteinuria. Why, why do we have homocysteinuria? Because homocysteine is being peed out. In, it's in urine. That's why it's called homocysteinuria. What are some of the symptoms we're going to see in homocysteinuria? Well, it's a hypercoagulable state. So we're going to see stroke. We're going to see MI. We're going to see atherosclerosis. All those are going to be seen. We're also going to see um, dislocated lenses. That's also another big thing we see in homocysteine. homocysteinuria. And it's often precipitated in kids because it's a genetic disease. And it's also an autosomal recessive disease. Okay, we also talked about the deficiency of the enzyme, cystothionine synthetase, that is really going to cause homocysteinuria. Another way of having um, homocysteinuria is having deficiency of folate or B12 because you kind of need both these vitamins to really make methionine. And if you don't have these vitamins, then what happens? Your homocysteine level rises again. And again, you have the same presentation as homocysteinuria, which is the autosomal recessive type. So uh, that's another way you can have homocysteinuria. So really, the stop can be here, increasing level of homocysteine. The stop also can be here, increasing level of homocysteine. Another way of looking at uh, homocysteinuria is what is one thing? How would you kind of control it? What are, what are some of the treat, treatment options um, for, um, for homocysteinuria? Well, let's talk, let's think about it. If the patient has low levels of cystothionine synthetase and it's not completely deficient, then we want to increase the level of, or we want to make cystothionine synthetase that the patient has as effective as possible. And how can we make it as effective as possible? By putting all the things that it needs. And what does it need? It needs B6 or pyridoxine, right? So adding B6 in their diet is going to maximize our cystathionine synthetase effect and that's one way of uh, treating uh, homocysteinuria. That's only if this patient has low level of cystathionine. If the patient is deficient in folate or B12, then we also give folate or B12 um, supplementation. Another way of looking at it is going on a low protein diet, especially methionine, right? Because methionine it will eventually make homocysteine. And if we decrease uh, methionine uh, in our diet, then we're going to eventually decrease homocysteine and we're going to have less of the effects of homocysteinuria. So that is my take on homocysteinuria.